As promised, every Monday I will be coming to you guys and bringing you Media Monday where I will be having a guest every week and talking to them about their experience in the media industry. So today I have a special guest. Her name is Evi Siskos and she is going to be talking to us today about her journey in the media industry. So Evi is super special. She got her start just like I did at Telemundo and she is a TV host, actress, wife, mom, traveler and actually something really excited with her. Her and her family are going to be packing up, selling all of their things, and traveling the world. So I'm really excited to talk to her a little bit more about that. But make sure to ask us any questions if you have any. I know a few people submitted some questions before, but I um, I will get to those questions towards the end. But if you have any questions during the presentation, I will try to get to those during the talk with Evie. So I'm just saying hi to everybody on here. Welcome. Welcome to Media Monday. Our guests will be hopping on really soon. But I guess submit any questions that you have, anything about the media industry, anything about television. Where do you think the media industry is going? Those are some of the questions I'm going to be talking to Evie today about. So hi, everybody. Let's see. How are you? Hope everything is great back in New York. Yes, I'm doing so well. Thank you. No, I remember meeting you back when I was in LA. So we're just going to wait for her for a little bit. But if you have any questions about the media industry, how Evie or I got my start in the media industry, where we think it's going, what types of projects we're working on, maybe some of the struggles that we face because Evie and I, we've both been in front of the camera, but she has a much different background on television and being an on-camera personality than I do. So I'm sure that she can answer a lot of your questions in a different way than maybe I would. So make sure to stay tuned. She'll probably be hopping on any minute now, but I guess how's everyone doing? I know one of the questions that I got uh, before joining the live was, you know, how did you get your start? And that's something that we're definitely going to talk to Evie about today. And let me see, Evie just joined on. So let's see if we can get her on. One second. Let's see, can I hear everybody? What's Hi! up? Hi! <laughs> What's up? How are you? <laughs> I am good, literally, since the last time I saw you in the middle of moving. So oh. it's been crazy. Yeah, no, it has, have you gotten any more headway as far as like, because I know just for anybody that doesn't know, Evie is literally. You cut up a little bit. I can't hear you. Yes. Ooh. Okay. Now I can. Can you hear, hear me you. now? Oh. Okay. Perfect. I think okay. you connected to another Bluetooth device that I have. I was so like, I "Where'd she go?" You. I can hear you like across my apartment, and then I was like, "Wait, no!" But I <laughs> okay. Now but, I hear you perfectly. But yeah, like I was telling everybody, if you don't know, Evie is selling all of her things and moving and, and just traveling the world with her family. So has how's it been going? Have you been able to sell a lot more of your oh stuff? Oh my God, literally. Okay, so the thing is since, okay, so I'll give you a little bit of the backstory of what's going on, you know, like how we're moving and why we're moving and everything. So last year we got, we always said we wanted to travel. So we've been traveling for years and you know, before we became a family, we were traveling and um, we always said, we're like, oh, one day we have to like get up and just like travel the world. And last year we got a letter from the government that the bridge right next to our house is falling apart and they have to like build a new bridge. And our house is right on like the highway on that bridge. And um, we got eminent domain and the government bought out our house. So this whole house is going to be demolished. So we're literally selling everything, cabinets, like everything. And, um, and since we're not, we decided not to buy a house because we're like, we're just going to literally just set off and travel. It makes it even harder because I never realized how much stuff I have that I'm like, oh my God, I 
need to get rid of so much stuff. But it's like super, like, it's like a cleanse. It's like a spiritual cleanse. Sure. Getting rid no, of everything. It's great. I mean, I've done that. Just, I mean, I didn't travel the world like you guys, but after every move, I just, eventually I was moving so much that I was like, you know what? Let me just sell everything. It makes the process easier. Yes. But I'm so excited for you guys. And now that a little bit more people are joining, I guess the first question that I wanted to ask you is, did you know that you always wanted to be in the media industry? Like when you were a kid, did you dream about something like that? Or did it kind of change along your path? Yeah, no, since I was a kid. Like I remember being in second grade, we were reading the, the Frog and the Toad. And, and I remember just like reading um, plays, you know, as a kid, it was like, now the frog goes or whatever. And then like, it was like, and I remember like kids learning how to read being like the frog and the toad. And I was like, the frog and the toad. And I'm like, why are these kids so slow? Like, why aren't they like acting it out? You know, so from like a young age, I always knew I wanted to be an actress. And I always knew that I wanted to be like in media. But it wasn't always, you know, like, I always knew I wanted that deep down. But when it came time for college, it was, um, it was a different story. I was always like in theater. I was a thespian and everything like through high school. But when the time for college came, it was like, you know, my parents were like, okay, but what are you going to study? And I was like, oh, I want to do theater. And they're like, no, but you know, like, what are you going to study? And I was like, oh, shoot, you know, like, okay, I guess I have to study something. And um, so I went to college for international business. And um, because I was like, okay, if I'm not going to, if I'm not going to pursue the arts, I'm going to do the next best thing I'm good at, which is languages. And I speak several languages. So I was like, okay, I'm going to do international business. But, um, but yeah, in my heart, I always knew that, you know, media and acting and television were my passion. And it's, you know, what I loved to do. Sure. No, that's awesome. And I mean, now you're doing it, but you're doing it in a bunch of different platforms you've been a tv host an actress in a lot of different ways i guess when i know you got I, correct me if i'm wrong but i mm -hmm. know i got my start at telemundo and you used to be a tv host at telemundo for acceso total and i know you do it sometimes still even to this day how did that opportunity come about and what were kind of like your first on-camera opportunities whether it was acting and tv hosting and how did that like start so it's a funny story. And this is why, like, I always tell people, you never know where something is going to lead you and no gig or work is ever too small. It doesn't matter what you're doing. So um, my last semester of college, I had already like, I, you know, I was studying international business and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, I really got to do what I love. And I was like, how am I ever going to know if I'm going to make it on TV if I don't actually audition? So I went online. I didn't have an agent or anything. I was just like on the websites. You know, I think it might have been, I don't know if it was backstage or New York castings or something. And I'm like looking for castings. And there was a commercial that they were, there was an audition for a commercial for like some like credit score or something. And, um, and I went and auditioned and the guy's like, are you fluent in Spanish? Because we're planning on doing this audition, this uh, commercial, both in English and Spanish. And I was like, yeah, I'm fluent. But they never auditioned me. You know, like I, they just went by like me telling them that I was fluent. So when we got to, um, to set that day to record the commercial, there's a woman playing my mom and a guy playing my brother. We shoot the commercial in English and everything went like super well. Then we go to shoot it in Spanish. And it turns out that my mom and brother had lied and they didn't speak Spanish. And, um, and then the guy's like, wait, but you guys said in the audition that you spoke Spanish. They're like, yeah, we took it in high school. But like the script was actually like, there were words in the script. It wasn't just like, hola, you know? So yeah. the guy's like, the guy was like, oh my God. He was like, can you do this commercial yourself? Like, can you do it by yourself? And I was like, yeah. So I ended up doing the commercial. And then the woman that was there, she, um, after we shot the commercial, she had her own advertisement firm and she's like, have you ever thought about working for the Spanish channel? And I was like, no, I was like, at that time, I had no idea the impact that Latinos have in the market. And I had no, I, I was just like, no, you know, like, I just want to focus on the American market. And she's like, she was like, um, you're really good. She's like, I think you would do really well in the Spanish channel. And she's like, I worked for Telemundo for 20 something years. She's like, I'm going to refer you literally that week. I got a call from the channel that they were having auditions 
I went for the audition and like a week later I landed my first segment, which was a Goya segment. It was like a cooking segment. And then months after that, I was still in college, by the way. So I was still in college. Um, the main host, uh, for Acceso Total got transferred onto the news and I got called from our producer. Like they were like, can you come in tomorrow to cover the live show? And I was like, yeah, yeah. Like I'll come in. And, wow. um, yeah, so it was crazy. It was literally being like the right person at the right time. And it, it, like, I still look back at it and I was like the way that everything moved. It's like, you really, really, nothing is impossible. It really isn't. You just have to like set your mind to something because the way that the universe conspires sometimes to make things happen, it's, uh, it's insanity. And that's yeah. how I got my start at Telemundo, literally a college wow. kid that, you know, just happened to be at the right place at the right time. And I almost didn't go to that commercial because it was like, I remember it was like paying like, I don't know, it might have been like a hundred bucks for both commercials. And I was like, oh, I don't know. It was like a long set day and stuff. And from that commercial, it opened so many doors for me. So it's, it's like, right. you never know. Yeah, no, that's amazing. And I mean, I think I talk to people all the time, like, just put yourself out there. I think your story is a perfect example of that. Like you really never know, like just to get your feet wet, like kind of one of those things. I remember there were a lot of instances because the media industry can be a tough or risky place to be. And there were instances where I was like, oh, I don't know if this is the right place for me. Like, but let me just, uh, let me throw out an application. Let me do an audition. Let me, let me just put it out there and see what happens. And like things were just starting to come in. And I think that's a perfect example. So you started, that was, you started with the commercial and then Telemundo. And in your mind, I think this is actually something that I talked to a lot of Latinos or maybe even people that are born here first generation, that they want to make it in the American English media market. And that was kind of something that you pointed out. Yes. So was that something that after that opportunity, did it change your mind at all? Or you still had that desire to like work on English channels or English projects as well? Okay, so when I first started out um and this was like my mindset you know auditioning and everything like that when you're first generation I think that there's a lot of um I, I want to say maybe like stigmas you know that that you're like oh if you go to the American market first of all okay there, there's a lot of things though like to be said with this because I feel like it's like a tree with so many branches um it, Yes, I wanted to start off in the American market. Then when I got to the Hispanic market, I'm like, wow, there is so much opportunity here, especially because I'm fluent in both English and Spanish. And that's why I always tell people, work on your Spanish because you never know. Like, I also do voiceover work in English and in Spanish. And that also has opened the doors for me. Do I, do, do I find discrepancies in, in the pay, for example? That's why I'm saying, like, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tree with many branches because... You know, it, it's like, yes, the American market, I will do the same commercial in English and the English speaking commercial sometimes pays more than the Spanish one. Or there are gigs in Spanish that do not pay as much and it's like the, the same work. And for some reason, we don't get paid as much being a Latino. So there are discrepancies in that. So when you say, oh, I'm going to make it in the American market, it, it is a big difference when it comes to pay. But when it comes to opportunity, it isn't because you never know where one Spanish speaking role is going to lead to you. And do I hope that there's change in the future? Yes, I hope that we are moving towards change, especially because the Latino market is so strong and it is it's so big and we hold such a big consumer um, power. We really, really do. So I think that we're heading towards change. But um, but yeah, I, in the beginning, I was like, I want to be in the American market, you know? No, same. Actually, I remember thinking <laughs> the same thing, even when I got my first internship at Telemundo, like, okay, when can I move on to the English market? And I think it was a mixture of things. Like, I always used to joke with like my family, because they were so excited for me when I started working at Telemundo, probably, you know, like your friends and family yes. were too. And they were like, why do you want to go somewhere else? And honestly, even though, you know, being someone that grew up in this country, even with, you know, a Latino background, you know, my dreams were in English, like both literally and figuratively. So it's kind of that balance that you're fighting. But you're right, it, there is a little bit more money in English 
English television in this country or just English media in general. But I'm still like, never say never to a Spanish opportunity because like you said, you're doing voiceover work and other forms of media. Most of the voiceover work that I'm doing right now is in Spanish. And, right. and you would something... never, I would have never thought that, you know, like I never would have yeah. thought that the Spanish market, there's so much work, you know, it's, and there's so many opportunities. So like you said, I hope it changes as far as pay and that, you know, it's a little bit at least more equal or, you know, a lot of people would argue that because, you know, I'm bilingual and you're multilingual that you should get paid more because you, you have a, a bigger reach and that you can reach more people with the multi. Yeah. Right. Languages. Like where's my but, money? Yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> and that's something that it's like, come on, pay us. But you know, it's still something that I think because it's still relatively new in this country. There wasn't always Spanish media in this country that it's something that we still have to fight for. So right. I think that kind of brings me to the next question as far as like the future. I know you've worked in a lot of different aspects of media in particular, but for you, where do you see the future of media in the capacity that you work in going? Uh, I think it's limitless, but I do see it a lot online. I do think that the power these days is in our hands. So like, for example, we're here, we're, we're connecting with people like this is going to stay on social media where people can watch it. And I think that that's, that's so powerful. It's so powerful because back in the day, like I remember when I first started in television, it was literally like, okay, I'm going to go online. And even though social media was, you know, like Instagram was there, Facebook was there, but it's changed so much in the last, I would say like even five years that I remember when I started working for television, the emphasis on social media was not that big. And now it's like the power is in social media. Like I produce my own commercials for social media. So I think that, that I think we're moving there. I think, I think it's there. I just think that, you know, like it's a very fine line between television and social media these days because I even sh have shot commercials where they're exclusively for online content, you know, so and it also has a wider a wider reach because back then a commercial was only limited to whatever channel it was going to be played at. Now web, it's like you're on the web. You, someone all the way on the other side of the world can see your work and can, you can be found just from social media. So I think that that's where we're heading to. And uh, yeah, and the future is here. It's it's on social media. We're on it right now. Yeah, no, most definitely. And I think it's funny. We. I think a lot of even media companies kind of knew that but they weren't putting that much attention on online platforms like it, even traditional broadcast companies right but now I think it's like they always knew that but it was kind of on the side and I think now with COVID it's pushed it even more it's like wait now people are at home and wait they're not turning on the tv they're opening their laptop or their phone or their tablet like more than they are the tv so now what? And I think it kind of like forced it like, yes, you have to be online. You have to be on all of these different platforms. And it's, it's exciting. And especially because I think we kind of grew up when like social media just started, you know, yeah, it was still pretty yeah. like new and we were kind of like discovering it. But now people that are growing up these days, they're growing up with it, like ever since they were really young. So it's like, you have to get that consumer too, because they're like born with it practically. They, they really, really are. And it's like, and it comes like second nature, I feel like to them, because like, we're the generation that literally, like, I remember Facebook came out when I was in high school. And it was still like, you know, it was still new. I remember like getting on Facebook and stuff. And I would tell my family in Greece, like, oh my God, you guys got to get on Facebook so I can see you guys. And they would be like, wait, what do you mean? Like you're taking pictures of everything. Cause I was always like the kid with like a camera taking pictures of everything. And, and it's changed so much, you know, from back then. And even like the way that, that we communicate as opposed to like 18 year olds this day, you know, this day and age, it's completely different. Sure. No, most definitely. And I think it's one of those things where, I think eventually it is going to get to the point where traditional television is almost obsolete. Like, I hate to say it because I grew up with like traditional TV and getting so excited to work in that industry. But like every year, it just feels like more and more. So I guess another question that I had for you, um, actually, one of the questions that somebody submitted beforehand was 
how do you deal with the feeling of being judged when you're someone that's put in front of the camera? I thought that was a good question. Somebody said, girl, before. you have to get over that real quick, especially with audition. Cause you deal with so many reject. Like I have for any job that I have gotten, I've probably gone on like, I don't know how many auditions, like literally you have to be, and I'm not saying develop a thick skin where like you go to one audition and you just don't care because you do have to care for your craft but you cannot care for judgment because there's so many times that I have been to an audition. Right. And, um, and I don't get the job. I really like, I haven't gotten the job for whatever reason. And then later on, I've, you know, met the director by, you know, random chance. And they're like, Oh my God, we really liked you. And you were like, you know, there, but it just, you didn't fit the character and like, you were really good, but you just didn't fit. And it's like, Oh, wow, that's why I didn't get picked. And then I've had instances where I auditioned for things and months later, the director called me and was like, you were so good at the audition that I wanted you to be in this, um, um, in this project of mine that I'm working on now. So you, you have to just forget what people think of you. Not everyone, first of all, not everyone's going to like you. You're not going to be everyone's cup of tea. And that's, that's in general in life, whether you are going to be in the media or you are going to be anywhere in life, you know? we need to get past those judgments, you know, and at the end of the day, it's what you think of yourself, you know, like what value do you bring to the table? Because if you see that value, other people will see that value too. No, most definitely. I think that's something that it can be really tough. Even people who have been in the media industry for a little while, I still know people who have been in the media industry for decades and yet they still kind of have that, that fear of judgment, or maybe they want to transition into a different part of the media industry. And they're like afraid to because they've been doing this one thing. And they're afraid of the judgment that they're going to get by switching over. I'll, I'll be transparent. I was a little bit afraid of the judgment I was going to get from moving back to New York from LA because that was a dream of mine. And I used to share to people all of the time, how big of a dream it was for me to work in TV in LA. And then wait, but now she's going back to New York. And it's funny too, because people did message me like, yo, what's going on? And you will For get those real? comments. <laughs> yeah, like people are not quite, especially on social media, since we're talking about it, people are not quiet. They will let you know, especially when you're like in front of the camera or you're a more public facing person, they'll let you know what's on your mind. And you just kind of have to like, take it for what it is. <laughs> That that's actually true because in 2016 I decided, and this is this was a year of change for me. 2016, um, I decided to take time off from TV. I had it was like I had always been on a spiritual journey of like finding myself and everything. In 2016, I realized there's usually a fine line between doing what you love in the industry as passion and for fame or for fame. Um, and it's such a fine line because it gets, you know, as a byproduct of being on television or putting yourself out there through social media or whatever, you do become a public figure and, and fame, you know, it comes, you know, some, some people get it on like, you know, like, like Lady Gaga type of fame, you know, like on, on another level, like Beyonce or whatever world fame. But even like micro fame can get to you sometimes. And um, in 2016, I realized that I needed to take that time off because I was pursuing my passion to get acknowledgement and to get fame. And I realized that. And in 2016, I was like, I need a break from media. I need a break to find myself. I need a break. Like, it, this isn't real, you know, like it, fame is not something that is real. And, and, um, and I, and when I took that time off, I, it took me about a year. And I realized during that time, my passion for the arts. And I was like, this is what I truly love to do. But then I came from a different perspective and a different angle which I think that as an artist whether you are a singer an actor uh me as someone in the media radio host or whatever it is truly find why you are doing what you're doing if it's your passion or if you are pursuing it for fame because 
it, it's two different things and they bring you two different levels of satisfaction because passion fulfills you. Chasing fame leaves you drained and it leaves you empty, you know? So, and when you're pursuing your passion, you could do it forever, you know? No, that's so true. And I think it's something that a lot of people don't talk about too much is that, that chasing that acknowledgement when you're put and when you get even, I mean, a small level of fame and people recognizing you in some way, shape or form that you start to get used to that. And it almost becomes, I felt that way, even when I was in LA, it almost becomes like part of how you value yourself. Like, right. Oh, I don't have enough value unless certain people recognize me, unless I get a certain amount of likes or followers on Instagram. Well, right. And social and, media that happens too. Yeah. You know? So it adds like another level on top of it. So as much as social media can be such a great tool, it's also something you kind of have to be really careful with because you can get obsessed with you know, the likes, the comments, oh, wait, I poured my heart out into this post and it's not and no one's as reading much engagement. It, yeah. right. <laughs> and it's like, wait, but I, I worked. And then sometimes I know I get frustrated. I don't know if you do with this, but I'll pour my heart out on a post and it doesn't get that many, that much engagement. And then I just post like a cute photo of me with like a coffee and it gets like all the likes in the world. And I'm like, what? But it's just me and coffee. What's going on? And it can be really, it can really mess with your head sometimes. Yeah, yeah. I think also as as women, it, I think the pressures of social media are even stronger for women, you know? Because I, I feel like every, even like now, like I, I look at teenagers and I'm like, oh my God, thank God that I was like that last generation that like, like that social media really came in, you know? Like, like I, I think I was the last generation really that, social media wasn't really introduced yet because I don't know how girls that are like 14, 13, really like getting into like their teenage years handle the pressures of social media. Cause I look back at pictures from when I was 14 and like with my best friends, we looked like 14 year old girls, like, you know, who didn't brush their hair. And like, now I see 14 year olds and I'm like, no, she's not 14. There's no way she's 14. She looks like she's like 23. And it, I think it's because of the pressures that are on women on social media. Yeah, no, most definitely. I think it's, it's crazy the type of stuff that you see and like girls that are, are chasing that fame at such a young age, you know, even, okay, maybe as a teenager, I knew that I wanted to be on television or I knew that I wanted to be in the media field, but I wasn't necessarily chasing that fame at 13, 14 years right, old, right, where right. we have 13, 14 year old TikTokers that are super famous. And then now that's kind of the, the standard for other teenagers. And it's like, oh my God, like, no, like, like, it's not, it's not realistic for everyone, but people can get obsessed with that. And yeah, uh, oh my goodness, I feel so bad and even actually someone just mentioned and the cyberbullying like there's so much that was something I didn't really have to deal with that much when I was oh like, I yeah I never dealt with that I don't remember. yeah yeah like there was like no cyberbullying or at least I wasn't like aware of it you know like I didn't I don't know I never experienced that as a teenager and it's it's so hard for people and oh actually one question that somebody asked um before in the and the question poll was when it comes to building your confidence in front of the camera and, you know, it was something that you kind of started when you were in college and you were always into theater. Do you think that's something that really helped you or what were other tools and ways that helped you even throughout your career to become more confident on camera? So it's funny because I was always, 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 like I said, in theater. So I never had a problem being on stage. Like that was my element. I always felt, you know, in my element in front of a camera on a stage. But the change happened, I would say, like when I started working on television and I was like doing lives and everything, I was comfortable being live and everything. But I didn't delve into my authentic self because I think that there's like the persona that you put for television, especially when you're a, a TV personality. Um, there's this persona, right? That can be, you know, like on TV, like people, I, I don't know if people would tell, maybe they, maybe they do because there is a shift. There was a shift. I know there was a shift in me and it was 
me being authentic to myself. Um, and I remember there's actually a, an interview with Oprah that she says that she used to, I forgot who she used to watch on TV. Um, she was like her, she's been on TV longer than Oprah. You know who this is. She's like, her name is on the um, tip of my tongue. And she said that Barbara she Walters. To, Barbara, or, yes. Barbara. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. So she said that she used to laugh. Um, what's up, Mateito? Um, she used to like laugh just like, you know, like try to act just like her and be all poised like her. And then one day, like her laugh came out and she was like, because she was trying so hard to be like her. And I think that there was definitely like a shift in, and that came through getting to know myself more. That came through practices of meditation. That came through finding stillness and finding myself to be my authentic self. Not so much in my head, like, oh, okay, I have to answer like this. I have to even like, you know, like sit straight and like, you know, make sure that everything is, is uh, perfectly answered. And, and, and many times, you know, like being on the Spanish channel, I'm fluent in Spanish, but I think in English. And when you're on TV, especially in my beginnings, I would, you know, I would answer things in Spanish that I'm like, oh, this would have sounded so much more intelligent if I was speaking in English, you know, like, just because like, like, I think in English, as I, as I went on, it, you know, it became like, more fluent and more, you know, like, I was able to, to just express myself freely in Spanish, like in English. But I think that also made me become even more authentic to myself, you know, like, if, If I make a mistake, it's okay to laugh at myself, you know, on TV, especially when it's live television. And like I, and you have a prompter and you've got some Spanish words that are like literally 14 letters long and you're just like trying to pronounce it. And I'm like, oh my God, this is like such a slip, you know? So yeah. it's, so yeah, I, I, I did see that shift in me and, and it was more of like a becoming myself. And I think that that made me more, even more comfortable in front of a camera. Sure. No, most definitely. It's something that I think we're so afraid to like make mistakes on camera, just because, you know, we have this idea of this like picture perfect um, TV personality. But it, nowadays, especially I think even with social media and YouTube, it, it kind of makes you more relatable, you know, it, especially when you like acknowledge those mess ups, too. It's like everybody yeah. does it. It, happens. And it was so it was so you know what social media for me was so hard getting out of that TV persona because even like the way I present after like so many years of, of presenting, like even a segment, it's like, hi, you know, like it's, it's so pro it was so programmed in me that even like getting out of that persona for just to be myself on social media. Oh my God, that shit was so hard. Like I was like, I was like, Oh my God, I feel so like this sounds like it's like a report, you know, like I'm reporting a segment For the channel, and, and I had to work on that, too, like, to just be myself on social media, you know? Most definitely. And I think the last question that I have for you uh -huh. before we leave is, I know you guys are about to travel the world and be a traveling family. I think I even heard a quick, you know, a Mat Mateo voice. Yeah, that was, he was. He was like, <laughs> yeah. he's like, what is mommy um, doing? <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, I want to get in there, photo bomb. So what is up next for you? What type of projects are you going to be working on? Is it mainly content around you traveling the world with your family? Is it going to be other things? What's kind of going to be the next thing so for you? So it's literally going to be that. So guys, make sure to follow our journey because it's going to be every, like literally everywhere we're at. We really want to show like our whole, um, our whole motive for all of this is to show other families that it's possible. Because a lot of people, like once you have a kid, it's like, oh my God, that's it. My dreams of traveling the world are gone. So it's going to be like showing people, you know, the coolest places that you can travel as a family, how to travel as a family, like tips. We have our other page, which is travel is Epic. And they're like, we have like all of our family content and, um, and yeah, so that's what we're going to be working on for the next year or two is just trap. We're starting in Mexico and then we're going to plan on doing South America. Honestly, as long as like the, cause you know, we are in pandemic times. So, <laughs> so we do have to like, go accordingly to what is open what we're allowed to like where can we go so so we're starting off like that i'm still doing like my pro the amazing thing about the pandemic is that auditions and everything everything is online so if i do you know like i'm still doing my voiceover work i'm still auditioning so if i do book something i will you know fly out so 
so it's a uh, it's amazing that we have the access to virtual you know auditions oh my goodness yeah no it's made it so much easier actually you don't have to go in person in the middle of the day sometimes you get called last minute for it uh, they're always so. last minute yeah like, <laughs> like I remember when I first started my husband's like why did they just call you this morning for an audition I'm like yeah that that's how it is that's and like you don't know <laughs> and you don't know if you booked until like the last minute either so it's like exactly that's, that's the industry no, for sure. Well, good yeah. luck to you and your thank family. Thank you. And thank you so much for joining me and sharing all of this information in your journey of thank how you, you got into the industry. Again, guys, make sure to follow Evie and her journey with her family because she'll be traveling all over the world with yes. Travel is Epic. And thanks again. And I'll talk thanks, to you Thanks, girl. Yes. Take care. Kisses. Bye. Take Bye. Care. Bye. <laughs>